Hello everyone, this is the final boss minute, and on today's episode, only the best game deserves a prize. Welcome to the show, I am Kyle Bossman and I am getting ready for VGX. What is VGX you might ask? Me too. Uh, who knows? Officially VGX is uh, the next generation of video game awards, an all day gaming experience and true binging dream for gamers. That's a true binging dream. I guess uh, uh, what VGX is, is it's, it's the VGAs, it's changed. Uh, the Video Game Awards, or uh, Spike's um, yearly televised uh, award show for video games, it was a big deal. Video Game Awards always been kind of weird in that uh, it'd be like teabagging jokes that some Hollywood writers would come up with and, 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 and celebrities would come out and deliver monologues they didn't understand. And the best part of the VGAs was always actually not the awards, but the exclusive reveal trailers, which were actually a blast. So I guess VGX is that. It's like, hey, let's take out the dumb parts of what the VGAs were and make this new thing. Basically, a mini E3 uh, broadcast live online everywhere for three hours. Um, the X, I don't, nobody knows what the X stands for. Solve for X. VG times X equals exclusives and awards. So today's list is, again, something I've kind of stolen from Entertainment Weekly of all places. Uh, when it's awards season, when it's Oscar season, they'll do these things where it's like, here's why he'll win and here's why he won't win. That's what I'm doing for the VGX Game of the Year nominees. And you might say, yeah, right. This is rich. Guy from Game Trailers making predictions about his own awards show. But uh, actually, Game Trailers is purposefully kept very distant from VGX. Uh, we don't know what exclusives Jeff Keighley has locked down. And also, you'll notice that there is no one from Game Trailers on the advisory council for VGX, despite uh, three representatives from Polygon. And I am, I am, I'm not bitter about that. Bioshock Infinite. Why it will win? Uh, Bioshock Infinite, I think, has one of the most interesting worlds of any of the nominees this year, and that's sort of the strength of the series, is just uh, putting you in a scenario where you feel compelled to move forward just for the sake of exploring the space. Also, I feel like when people play Bioshock Infinite, they think they're playing a game made for smart people. Why it won't win? You have this long extended boss fight with this mother ghost who gets hurt by bullets. And, and I just don't think the voters are going to be able to overlook that. Because like you just, you shoot the ghost with bullets and it gets hurt enough at some point where it's like, okay, that's enough. I'll, I'll, I will lead you to onto the next secret you'll discover from the story. And then she gets mad at you again and you have to shoot more bullets into her. And then she's like, oh, you're right. That's enough bullets. Okay, let me show you some. Bioshock Infinite is a dumb game. Grand Theft Auto V. Why it will win. Uh, GTA V is, is probably the greatest technical achievement of any of the nominees. It's just a, a huge game. And also people like it, it, its writing and openness and, and, and humor. People like that stuff. Why it won't win? Uh, so GTA V actually is the only game on this list that I haven't completed, so I can't be too judgmental, but how I feel about the game in terms of if, if I had to make a criticism is that it it's, seems like it's overreaching a lot. It takes pride in its story, and a lot of people who like it take pride in its story, but to me, I don't think you can have a great story and a truly open world at the same time. You can make Trevor run over any pedestrian you want. You can make him headshot any pedestrian, and he gets away with it. Just any innocent person walking down the street, and police officers, and they can just run away. And then, so how is that supposed to make you feel when in the next cutscene, it's like, oh no, I have to torture someone? This is a moral quandary. And it's like, no, it's not. Trevor is a horrible, he's, you made him a horrible person. And then he lets the guy go at the end. He's like, sets him free. And so it's like, oh, there really are some redeeming qualities to Trevor. Time to go do the next mission I have to do. Super Mario 3D World. Why it will win, uh, actually I'm surprised even to see this game nominated, but uh, look at it. it is, this game is a, a showcase of game design. It is, it is the video gamiest video game of the nominees. At E3, we all kind of looked at it and said, oh, this again. 
And then you get this game and you crack it open and you see how full of ideas it is. Just <clears throat> ideas! There are too many ideas in this game. Just the dumb baseball. You get a dumb baseball you can pick up and you're like, oh, this is worthless, I can't do anything with this. And then the game says, nope, here's hundreds of things you can do with this baseball. It is stupidly good. Why it won't win? Uh, it's a Nintendo game on a Nintendo console. And as Jason Rubin says, it's a crime that we don't play these games on the systems we have. I know I do like a lot of bits and say a lot of dumb jokes on this show, but um, if I could get serious for a second, um, what Nintendo is doing is a crime and the police should go to Kyoto and put everyone in their offices in handcuffs for putting out great games on their irrelevant hardware. Because, like, think about this for a second. I'm not going to spend $300 to play one excellent game when I can spend four or $500 to play a bunch of regular games. Think about it. It's simple economics. <laughs> the Last of Us! Why it will win. The Last of Us, I think, is a, is a mature game. And, and not mature in the way that Gears of War thinks it's mature, because it's got blood and swear words. But I have the characters sound like they're like cartoon characters. Lieutenant Baird in for duty! We gotta cool out, cause there's a Brumac coming! But next to him is an emergence hole! I'm gonna cut it up with my chainsaw gun! The Last of Us is mature in a way in that it, it, it assumes that you're not an idiot. It, it, it is mature in, in its, its writing and its acting and, and it's in its game design. For instance, Last of Us doesn't have a little corner of the screen where it tells you what your objective is right now. Because the writing does that for you, and I deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for having writing good enough for me to know clearly what the next objective is. Why it won't win? Um, I don't know, uh, zombie fatigue, I guess? I guess I could see where maybe the advisory council is like a bunch of dumb idiots. That could be like a, a possibility. Like, like maybe a bunch of them don't understand what game of the year means. That could be like a confusion. Tomb Raider! White will win. Uh, Tomb Raider is really the dark horse here. Uh, it is the game I'd be most surprised to see win. Uh, I guess because it's, you know, the least played probably of any of these games. Which is kind of sad because honestly, I think Tomb Raider would be in my personal top five of the year. I really like this game. It is interesting in unexpected ways. It has, I think, the best level design of any of the nominees this year. The world of Tomb Raider is interconnected in interesting ways, and there's never a loading screen when traveling through it. And, and, and it is practical. Practical in a way that, that each environment serves as both a video game level and something that makes sense in its world. Tomb Raider is a good game. Why it won't win? I think Lara Croft is still really hard to connect with as a character. Uh, clearly a lot of effort went into making her more human and vulnerable but she still comes across a, a, as a real Mary Sue. Not a lot of flaws to Lara Croft. If you think of your favorite character in a dramatic TV show or, or movie, like think of that person right now, that character most likely does bad things. Uh, most of the other characters and the other nominees this year, that person does bad things. Lara never does. It's why I said I didn't know what he likes Mario. He has no flaws. So does Lara Croft. No flaws. What do you got, Lara? <laughs> Lara's flaws is like, oh, I'm too adventurous. Stop being so adventurous, Lara! I can't! I must adventure! This is my flaw! Anyway, those are the nominees for this year. Uh, it's clear which one is my favorite, but I think Smart Money is on GTA 5. Uh, place your bets in the comments section below. But uh, let's watch VGX! I'm, I'm actually gonna watch it. I'm excited to see whatever Jeff is cooking up. And you can watch that too. December 7th, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, streaming live on all sorts of things. This site primarily, but you know, probably any device you own is going to be streaming this event somehow. And uh, I will be back here next Wednesday. I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching. Craig, did you see this? Kind of busy. No, it's the VGX most anticipated game list. Oh, let me see this. Well, this is a pretty bad list. Yeah, and it's missing one glaring omission. 
Philip Dollarfield doesn't care about saving the princess. This is ridiculous. They snubbed us. I know. We work too hard to be ignored like this. Hey, can I tell you something? If my video game can't be recognized as the most anticipated title in a three-hour multimedia gaming event that also turns into a half-hour highlight special on Spike TV at midnight on Monday, I don't know what any of this is worth. I feel the same way. Look, I'll work on the bazooka scooters, and we'll definitely hit that holiday 2015 release date. Actually, uh, I got some bad news about that. I was on a 3 a.m. Skype call with Patty. She's telling me she's having a hard time figuring out that one perk where you turn into a giant junior bacon cheeseburger and then smother everyone under your bun. Looks like we might have to postpone till spring 16. Well, will we still be an Xbox 360 exclusive? You bet. All right. <laughs> I'll never be hip.